Welcome aboard, history enthusiasts. Today, we dive deep into the extraordinary journey of the RMS Olympic, the eldest of the White Star Line's renowned Olympic-class trio. Overshadowed by her notorious sisters, the Titanic and Britannic, the Olympic charted a path of resilience and survival that is rarely told. From perilous collisions to heroic wartime service, and a stunning face-off with a German U-boat, this old reliable continued to defy odds. So buckle up as we set sail into the captivating yet lesser-known saga of the truly unsinkable RMS Olympic. The RMS Olympic was the pioneer of White Star Line's trio of Olympic-class ships, followed sequentially by the Titanic and the Britannic. While the infamous fate of Titanic, the most notable maritime disaster in history, is well documented, and the Britannic, which served as a World War I hospital ship, also met a tragic end in 1916 after colliding with a mine in the Mediterranean, the Olympic story stands apart. The Olympic dodged the heartbreaking destiny that awaited its sister ships by a hair's breadth. Remarkably, it survived direct hits and even sank a U-boat. The ship's survival story, brimming with luck and adventure, certainly warrants more recognition. Upon its launch on October 20, 1910, the RMS Olympic held the dual titles of the largest vessel and the largest man-made moving object globally. This record was surpassed a year later by Titanic, only marginally longer by 3 inches and 1,000 tons heavier. However, the tragic sinking of Titanic in 1912 returned the title to the Olympic. After successfully completing five transatlantic voyages, the Olympic met its first mishap shortly after departing Southampton, an hour and 20 minutes into the journey. The British cruiser HMS Hawk, navigating in the opposite direction, was caught off guard by the Olympic's wide turn. The smaller ship was drawn into the larger vessel's propellers, leading to an unavoidable collision. Built for ramming and sinking other vessels, the Hawk's strong bow cut deep into the Olympic's starboard side, creating two substantial holes above and below the waterline. Thanks to two watertight compartments, the ship averted sinking and managed to return to Southampton, albeit damaged. In contrast, the Hawk suffered a more severe blow, with its entire bow caved in. Post this incident, for which the Olympic bore the blame, it was widely suggested to maintain a safe distance from such colossal vessels. The collision incident inadvertently reinforced the misconception that these gargantuan vessels were unsinkable, an unfortunate notion that would have grave consequences for the Titanic. In a noteworthy related tidbit, E.J. Smith, the Olympic's captain at the time, would later command the Titanic, tragically perishing with the ship less than a year later. On the grim night of the Titanic's sinking, the Olympic was 580 miles away. Upon receiving the SOS, she immediately steamed toward the disaster site. But when she was still about 120 miles out, the captain was informed that the rescue was complete. The RMS Carpathia had picked up all possible survivors. When the Olympic offered to take on survivors, it was declined, given the emotional trauma the survivors would experience being transferred to a nearly identical ship. The controversy surrounding the inadequate number of lifeboats on the Titanic was now well known, and the Olympic was also known to have the same problem. Hastily, several second-hand inflatable lifeboats were added during a refit. Many of these were decayed and unfit for use, sparking a crew strike. Instead of addressing the crew's legitimate concerns, the White Star Line chose to replace some of them, an approach that proved futile. The strike persisted, with 54 sailors deciding to abandon the ship due to unsafe lifeboats and the incompetence of the non-union replacement crew. They faced charges of mutiny. Faced with negative publicity, the White Star Line allowed the strikers back on board. However, it took another five months for the Olympic to be withdrawn from service for a complete refit. Learning from the Titanic tragedy, the lifeboat's count was increased from 20 to 68, an inner skin was added to provide a double hull, and some watertight bulkheads were raised, correcting a design flaw. The overhaul increased the ship's gross tonnage, making the Olympic 36 tons heavier than the Titanic had been post-refit. The Olympic emerged better than ever, a fortunate turn of events as the First World War broke out a year later, with the ship playing a crucial role. With the onset of the war, as a precautionary measure, the Olympic was painted gray, its portholes were blocked, and deck lights were turned off to obscure it from view. Her initial voyages were commercial, carrying Americans back home. During one such voyage, she aided HMS Audacious, a ship severely damaged by a mine. 
After multiple failed towing attempts, the 250 people aboard the Audacious were evacuated to the Olympic before the Audacious sank. The incident led to a week-long detainment of the Olympic and her passengers, as the news of the Audacious loss was considered too disheartening for the British public. With the rising U-boat threat, commercial bookings dropped and the Olympic was initially planned to be out of service until the end of the war. However, in 1915, her massive size prompted the Admiralty to requisition her as a troop carrier capable of transporting 6,000 people. She was refitted with 12-pounder and 4.7-inch guns, and her peacetime amenities were stripped. Commanded by Captain Bertram Hayes, the Olympic played a significant role in the Gallipoli campaign in Turkey, transporting troops. She also rescued survivors from the French ship Provincia, sunk by a U-boat. Although this rescue action earned Hayes a reprimand from the Admiralty, the French government awarded him a gold medal of honor. Later in the war, the Olympic became instrumental in transporting U.S. troops to Europe. During this tenure, she nearly fell prey to a German U-boat. While near the Isles of Scilly, U-103, a German U-boat surfaced ahead. Reacting swiftly, the Olympic's gunners fired at the enemy, and instead of retreating, the ship charged at the submarine. Much like the HMS Hawk incident, U-103 was pulled into the Olympic's propellers, severely damaging its hull. The U-boat crew scuttled their vessel and abandoned ship, while the Olympic continued on her course, leaving the German crew's rescue to an American vessel. Despite sustaining minor damages, the Olympic safely returned to Southampton. It was later learned that U-103 had been preparing to torpedo the Olympic, but was unable due to malfunctioning torpedo tubes. For his remarkable service, Captain Hayes was awarded the Distinguished Service Order, DSO. During the war, the Olympic transported over 200,000 soldiers and covered roughly 184,000 miles. Captain Hayes received a knighthood in 1919, and the ship earned the nickname Old Reliable. After the war, the Olympic was refitted for civilian service once again. The refit modernized the rooms and upgraded the engine to use oil instead of coal, significantly reducing refueling time. Interestingly, during the refit, a dent with a crack was discovered just below the waterline, evidence of a failed torpedo detonation, a testament to the Olympic's lucky streak. Throughout the 1920s, the ship was a favorite among the rich and famous, including Marie Curie, Cary Grant, Charlie Chaplin, and future king Prince Edward. However, the Great Depression in the 1930s hit the shipping industry hard, reducing passenger numbers drastically. This, along with the emergence of larger, faster liners, signaled the end for the Olympic. In 1934, White Star Line and Cunard Line merged, facilitating the construction of the RMS Queen Mary and RMS Queen Elizabeth. Rendering older vessels like the Olympic effectively obsolete, the ship made her final departure from New York on April 5, 1935. Several attempts were made to preserve the Olympic, including proposals for summer cruises and transforming her into a floating hotel, but none proved feasible. In 1935, the ship was sailed to Jarrow and was systematically dismantled over the following two years. Many of her fittings can still be seen today in various hotels, museums, and collections. By the time of her retirement, the Olympic had completed an impressive 257 round trips across the Atlantic. Besides transporting wartime soldiers, she had safely carried over 430,000 commercial passengers. Unlike her sister ships, Titanic and Britannic, which tragically succumbed to disastrous circumstances, the lesser-known RMS Olympic truly lived up to the moniker of unsinkable. Her story, a testament to her resilience and the tenacity of her crew, is one that deserves greater recognition in the annals of maritime history. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.